Are you on your way with your Jeep Cherokee, but it just can't keep up on the adventures you want to be on? Well, stop fanning your engine, and you need to turn around and listen. Yeah, you. You need to get a hood louver. Extreme awesome. Super cooling technology invented by scientists. Yeah. This is my 1995 Jeep Cherokee XJ. It's got the inline six, four liter, like a 70 year old engine. Not specifically this one, but it was designed in like the 40s. It is a very reliable, resilient engine, but it's got some issues. And one of those issues is a lot of people like to use these Jeep Cherokees for off-roading, going real slow, especially in hot areas, or at least even in Washington, we get really cold in the winter, but it gets, especially these days, hot in the summer. And there's a couple different solutions. Uh, some people like to put blocks between their hood and the hood lifters. And then you get this horrible, ugly gap, and it just doesn't look good. Don't recommend it. Now there are some expensive options. You can get custom-made hoods, fiberglass hoods. You can buy two, three hundred dollar hood louvers. Or, like the nice guy from the infomercial, you can go to your local Ace Hardware, buy a five dollar floor vent, or, you know, just AC duct vent, and uh, cut some holes in your hood. And that's what we're gonna do today. Now it would be more than possible for us to just simply drill the holes, cut out a section underneath this hood louver, and put this hood louver on the hood. Would it look as good? No. Would it function? Yes, it will function just the same as what I want to do. So I want to just recess it under the hood so all you see are the vents. And it'll look, you know, closer to like it's supposed to be that way. It'll look better and it'll have less risk of, you know, possibly catching uh, a log or a branch or wind or whatever and getting caught on this than it will if we recess it. So I'm gonna start measuring up. I think I'm gonna do about three and a half inches of gap between all of this. There's nothing really uh, electronic right under there so I'm not so worried about water getting in. Right, as you see I have lined up five inches from the rear, three inches from the interior on both sides using my Speed square, super handy tool, it's for carpentry, but I recommend it for everything. And just to clarify, this line is gonna be here. So this is what you I want to see through the hood. So we're gonna cut out, boom. So this is how I'm gonna do that. Trace a line around the exterior. So now with that exterior line, we can determine how deep in this exterior is. So that's about one and a quarter, which lines up pretty darn well with this line that we've got already. So one and a quarter in And remember, you can always cut more out later, but you can't add metal back on. Now I recommend putting the plywood under your hood and also wearing protective goggles. I also recommend doing one side at a time and that way, however much you mess up on this side, is easier to just mimic your mess ups onto that side than it is to do step by step, changing, 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 if you know what I mean. So now cut less and you can always cut more and I'm going to cut on the inside of this yellow marker and uh, hopefully this will look really cool and actually help actually help So with the hole cut out, we've got our, you know, test run, just kind of loosely fit under there. And that's pretty much the look we're going for, the area I wanted it. And it's gonna be a lot cleaner 
having it flush with the hood instead of sitting on top of the hood. Also, you know, less chance of snagging a branch or whatever. I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna drill the four holes, clean up these edges, paint them so they don't rust, and yeah, baby, we are in business. bunch of beautiful visitors and one two three four yearlings spotted adorable little elk just a beautiful thing I'm very happy I get to see in life I can't appreciate these things people now I'm choosing some uh, rust-oleum truck bed coating to go on top of this primer and this is just trying to match it with the hood I've got monster liner on there but don't really want to order a quart of that just to do these two, so. Rustoleum it is. Couldn't recommend, it's fucking, it's like $20 a can, but I couldn't recommend a canned one better. Good morning, Greenwater. We have our overnight paint job turned out pretty good. I think that paint is gonna look way better. That fake bed lining is gonna look way better than the flat paint would have. I've got the other side cut out, the passenger side cut out 100%. I spent like two hours with a straight file just making those 90 degree corners and the edges as flat as possible. And that was hard. Even harder is going to be replicating that on this side in an, as much of a mirror as we can. So, you know, measure 27 times. I'm going to be using that right angle a whole lot. And it's a little cattywampus because, you know, these aren't straight angles and I'm trying to make a square and I'm trying to make two squares. Uh, so I'm gonna be measuring a whole lot and trying to get them to be, you know, exact mirrors of each other on each side of the hood. <sighs> it's gonna be fun. So let's get measuring and then we can start cutting. Just soaking all these pine needles so we don't start any fires. Now for this hole over here, it is five and a quarter, oh that's hot, five and a quarter on this corner and just about five inches on that corner and that shows the curve that occurs in this hood so yeah i'm gonna erase this whole line because it no longer matters what i wanted it to be because now it just has to mimic that side and this is why i love using these oil pens they just wipe away so easily and tied. Looks good over here. Now with those lines drawn up, we're ready to do the final cut. But remember, your hood latch cable runs directly under there. So be very careful not to cut that. That would be a pain in the booty to replace and or fix. On the length cuts, be careful. You might hit that cable if you go too deep. Second, you can always cut more off, so cut shallow. Cut on the inside of the square of the box. Do not cut on the outside of the lines. You can always cut and file more off can't really add any metal back on. So using the speed square, going out a half inch from the corner, marking, and then going out another, going out the same half inch, 
and marking to try and find the hypotenuse angle or whatever Miss Asatarova from Pacific Middle School would have wanted me to remember how to do. And that's how I'm roughly finding the 90 degree out spot to drill these holes. Math. It's what's for breakfast. Close enough for government work. So we've got everything pretty much in place except the holes drilled into this. Now, in a, you know, an easy world, you would just C-clamp the metal together and use the holes drilled in the sheet metal of the hood as guiding holes and guiding holes to drill these. But there's not a C-clamp in the world that I know of that can reach the 20, 30 inches into this hood and clamp this down. So we're gonna have to get a little creative. Well, we are in the home stretch here, people. I've got that driver side one all drilled and screwed and fitted and I got the bolts on and I'm quite satisfied, happy with it. Now it was a little challenging and I just wanted to figure out how to do it before I showed you guys. So it took really just one hand to go under here, hold this in place and slowly drill the first one, put a bolt in, put the nut over it, tighten it all the way down, make sure it's all lined up perfectly and then I drill the second one, third one, fourth one. You know, pretty straightforward, it's just kind of hard. Also, my arm's really itchy from touching this insulation. I bet it's like asbestos or fiberglass or something. I wash my arm off, probably gonna die or become the Hulk or something like that. Now, this is where the problem's coming from. As you can see where I pre-drilled that hole, it is interfering with this little support ridge right here. So I trimmed away a bit more of this fiberglass death plastic paper stuff I'm just gonna cut a couple inches to the right and a half inch down I'm gonna cut it and I'm just gonna you know bend it back down a bit it might be a bit harder with the strut on this side and all the stuff but we're going to do our best to use one hand to hold up while well, we are above the hood. One hand to hold up, the other hand to line up. When you decide, okay, that is the same setup as I've got on the other side. You just wanna take your screwdriver, put it through for a second. Once you've got a mark there, you take this down, you take that big mark, and you send her home. Now once you've got one in, this is where the interesting part is. You take one of your bolts, and the proper tool, I recommend these M470 bolts. You can use an Allen, red, Allen wrench for the head and I think they just look a lot cleaner once they're on the hood. They've got that rounded, that rounded top. So you put through the hole you've drilled, you line it up. Put that down. I also recommend using nylon nuts. Much less of a chance of it coming off on the highway. Just do your best to line this up exactly how you want it because this is the bolt that really decides how flush everything gets. Same as the first time. Just give yourself a little mark there. And 
undo this bolt and repeat until finished. Thanks for coming along. We managed to make some uh, hood louvers for our Jeep Cherokee to keep it cool at that low speed. This isn't necessarily for those high speeds on the highway. Uh, if you're having issues with that, you've probably got a bigger cooling problem that you're gonna wanna look into. Uh, radiator, coolant system might be clogged or not circulating at all. Or you might just need to uh, you know, drain it, fill it up again. Give that a check. But for those slow off-roading miles, this is exactly the solution we're looking for to keep a nice, cool engine temp. It only cost us about 40 bucks between the paint, the floor vents, and the bolts. So I'd say that's $160, $200 less than the next competitor on the market. I think we did a pretty good job. Follow along here, uh, like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends or anybody who owns a uh, nice cheap key like I do, and uh, post on Instagram and or YouTube every Monday and Wednesday, how-tos, adventures, all sorts of stuff. So, thanks for coming along, and remember, if some guy can do it,